I'd like to welcome Ms. Loretta O'Sullivan from the University of Melbourne and 1219 Sports Physiotherapy to discuss the reliability of measuring quality of performance on the single leg task in active post-pubescent females. Thank you. Um, today I'll be talking about the reliability of measuring the quality of performance on the single leg squat task in active post-pubescent females. Um, just some background information. Um, the reliability of measuring quality of performance on the single leg squat task has been established in female adults, but not in active post-pubescent females. Adolescents, due to the growth and development, um, differ from adults and children. And it is important to establish reliability in this group and not to rely solely on adult findings. The purpose of this research was to investigate the reliability of measuring quality of performance on a single leg squat task as an indicator of neuromuscular control in active postpubescent females. As for the method, our study design was an intra, intra and inter rater reliability study. Our participants were active postpubescent female adolescents with and without patellofemoral pain, taken from three private secondary schools in Brisbane from years 9 to 12. Our recruitment was interesting in that we used um, multiple steps. First of all, we got consent from the school to um, contact parents and teenagers. We then got the consent from the parents. We provided the parents with a sealed pack and inside that was a sealed teenager pack. Um, the teenagers had to co-sign the parent consent and then the teenagers were able to open their own pack themselves and consent themselves and return it um, back independently. And we did this to ensure that both the parent and teen provide, provided, import, uh, provided informed consent. And this was um, also done to respect the developing maturity and independence of the teenager, and also to encourage discussion between the parent and teenager. We recruited um, 13 participants for the, the reliability study, four with patellofemoral pain and nine without. Our test procedures, um, we used a standardised setup and instructions um, as per Wilson and Ireland in 2006. Uh, one researcher collected the data and our outcome measures were the front, frontal plane projection angle in standing and squatting and the frontal plane hip, frontal plane hip angle in squatting. Um, you can see here the foot plates that we used to standardise. We used a 60-degree um, squat and used the stool to measure that and we put these markers on as you can see. Um, the data was then um, analysed using um, Silicon Coach editing software um, and as you can see here the frontal plane projection angle standing, squatting and the frontal plane um, hip angle. The results of the study, um, this is the intra rater reliability here. Um, we found almost perfect um, inter and intra rater reliability for all measures. The highest correlations were found for the frontal plane projection angle. Um, we had ICCs from, in the squatting, ICCs from 0.94 to 0.98, and the lowest were for the frontal plane hip angle with the ICC of between 0.74 and 0.85. The average of the middle three trials were consistently equal to or greater than um, the average of five trials. So this is um, showing the ICC for the intra rate of reliability and you can see the average of three I've highlighted here. And this is just a graph of the inter rate of reliability for the left frontal plane projection angle squat and you can see that the um, lines are almost perfect there. So in conclusion, the Pacific, measures, the Pacific clinical measures of lower limb alignment of the frontal plane projection angle standing and squatting and frontal plane hip angle used as an indicator of neuromuscular control during the single leg squat task are reliable in active postpubescent females. And the clinical implications of this is that we can use the frontal plane projection angle and frontal plane hip angle during single leg squat performance um, in active postpubescent females in further research to determine if the quality of the performance of single leg squat is altered in those with and without patellofemoral pain and also by physiotherapists in the clinical assessment and management of patellofemoral pain. And I'd just like to thank um, 
the APA for the Dorothy Hopkins Award for this research and also Queensland Health and the Mata for postgrad scholarship for this. Thank you.